And here we are on the other side of the uh, simulation. So I think this is going to be our last video. We can go on and on to making these guys. Um, you can see that our safety factor is shifting around a bit. Uh, previously it was about 1.5. We're now dropping down to 1 point, uh, 0 0.6. And we're interested to see if we're getting the right behavior, correct behavior. Uh, we are seeing a different shape. It looks like what we want. Let's have a look at the slides. No, still have a little stuck on part. Uh, depending on what this is, um, sorry, this might actually be the beginning of the thread. Let's have a look from the other side. I'm just going to edit the slice plane to reverse it. Um, yeah, it's the end of the thread, which is getting pulled up. So we have been successful in here where our surfaces come away. So this is good. But we have a problem with the surface being pulled up by the thread. So the next iteration would be to try and figure this one out. On the other side, we do see, uh, because we were maximizing the deflection here by point, uh, five times, we went down to that just by a half. What happens here is that sometimes the simulation will actually run material together because of the relative movement. If we go to actual, we should see that it's flush. So it's just relative movement. So for example, if it moves slightly more uh, inside of its rounding, inside the calculations, we might actually get an interpiercing event. Now on this side, we can see what's happening here. So what we've got here is a really close face, uh, which is intersecting based on the mesh. So we do need to, in fact, increase our local mesh control on the outside of this thread. It's too close once meshed, and it starts to run the surfaces together, and then it triggers the contact. Nice. Well, we've got some progress here. Let's have a look at the result. Um, just hide the plate. Uh, min max, we're seeing again 0.5. It's right where we would expect to just hide that and get rid of this uh, slice plane here. We're seeing uh, an increasing sort of concentration of the stress in this crack, which we would expect. So as the crack comes around, we see this higher uh, value here. So again, if we have a look at where that's happening. You can see it's kind of emerging out of the, the beginnings of that uh, helical face there. Again, what we'd expect. And getting some you know, on the far side. Some nice uh, work there. Nice. So we do have a strange face in there. Um, Sometimes you get these little voids in the part. These are actually flat. It's caused by it struggling to uh, do the local mesh control uh, as it goes past the lighter or the, the more coarse mesh. So it may or may not be a big deal. Uh, again, we'd have to keep an eye on that. It is in a low stress area ish. The safety factor here is well up to. We have almost up to full full marks, but we might be seeing an effect of that right here. Uh, so that's a potential problem. So again, local mesh control is doing a good job. It's starting to show us the concentrating effect, the KT, of this uh, very sharp uh, crack or fillet, tiny fillet, essentially a zero fillet. Uh, so next from here would be a uh, increase uh, sort of focus on this area in here. Uh, we might have to decrease the overall mesh to be able to get into a smaller uh, size. Uh, but this is essentially just the next 
uh, level of iteration. Our biggest problem, though, is the way the geometry comes together uh, at this part. So if we, if we hide the rod end, let's see what's happening here. We're getting some localized uh, stresses on the top of the plate, as we would expect, uh, where the thread starts to dive in uh, at this part here. But it is too... Uh, it is coming across too too sharply, so the geometry is a problem here. So the next step would actually be go all the way back to the modeling and start fixing up the model right in here uh, between the, the rod end and the plate. Um, eventually, and you might go, uh, good lord, that sounds like a, a real painful ep episode. It is painful. Um, the goal here would be to start to uh, decide when we've done enough and it's time for a physical prototype. Um, you can only go so far with simulations, eventually. It is virtual or digital twin or however you want to think of it. But eventually we need to actually make the part. Do a test and see how it performs under fatigue or expected loading. Uh, the next in real low world uh, questions. Next question we're going to have is talking with a machinist about uh, locating thread starts um, up here and so on and so forth. However, one said, all of that, one said, um, Orlov's rule has been broken here, which is threading in bending. Uh, so watch the next set of videos, if you've uh, made it this far, uh, for how to get rid of this problem uh, so that we don't really have to get into endless cycles of simulations and all the rest of it, uh, unless we really have to. So go through the guided, it will show you uh, how to eliminate this problem by redesign. Thanks for watching. Again, just an intro to simulation. Uh, there's much more where this came from. Uh, endless tasks, a whole careers, if you wish. Uh, PhDs, postdocs, all that sort of stuff. Uh, but for here, we're just dipping our pinky toe into the water here. Uh, over to you, and good luck.